So welcome everybody. Thank you for attending this information session from the Minnesota Department of Agriculture. My name is Emily Toner. I'm a grant specialist here, and I'm going to be talking about the Community Development Financial Institution Technical Assistance Grant. And I'd also like to introduce my colleague who will be helping with Zoom and monitoring the chat, things like that, which is Anthony Adams. He is our Outreach and Engagement Coordinator in the Emerging Farmers Office. So thank you, Anthony. So this is a public information session and it will be, it's being recorded and that recording will be shared publicly just to let you know. So if you have any concerns about your video being shown or anything like that, please just keep your camera off and you'll be able to find the recording at the URL that's shown here. So a little bit about this grant program before on the broad overview before we dive in and talk a little bit more specifically about application and things like that. Um, this Community Development Financial Institution Technical Assistance Grant has about $260,000 in funds available. Applicants can request between $10,000 and $200,000. Um, the purpose of the grant is to support community development financial institutions or CDFIs to expand financial services to farmers. And applicants must be certified CDFIs to be eligible and must be serving farmers based in Minnesota. And applications are going to be due by September 5th. So that's just a high level overview. And I want to say, as we go through, you're welcome to put questions in the chat or raise your hand if you'd like to speak and say a question. I encourage you to do that slide by slide as we go in case um, something is specific to that information. You don't need to wait until the end to ask. So a little bit of background then uh, because I know, especially for farmers and in the agricultural sector, CDFIs are not a commonly spoken about type of institution. So I wanted to make sure um, that we answer this question in case there's just overall questions about what is this program and who are CDFIs. So why are CDFIs a valuable resource for farmers? CDFIs are financial institutions like bank, credit union, microloan fund, venture capital provider, who have chosen to go through a certification process with the U.S. Department of Treasury's CDFI fund. And they offer a wide range of financial services, like loan products, could be business support services. Um, and the reason that they could be of value to farmers is uh, because they might have more favorable financing terms or supportive business services because they're mission-based financial institutions who have gone through the certification process in order to serve a defined target population. And so that last sentence on this slide says, for example, the U.S. Treasury CDFI fund has a variety of eligible target populations that CDFIs can say they are here to serve, and that includes, you could select to serve low-income communities or historically underserved audiences, such as African-American, Hispanic, Native American, persons with disabilities, and there's a few others as well. So just to give you a sense that CDFIs are financial institutions, they have a lot of different services, and they may offer more favorable terms or more supportive services because they're mission-based. So in Minnesota, we have 33 certified CDFIs, and you can find the up-to-date list of who those CDFIs are on the CDFI Fund website. And I know, depending on the screen, you're viewing this presentation, and this might show up a little bit small, but I just wanted to give a snapshot of who are these 33 CDFIs. So some of you attending would be representing a CDFI, so you're very familiar with this list, but in case uh, you're not, it's interesting to see specifically who are these institutions. 
So that's just a little bit of background so that everybody's clear on the scope of why we're trying to um, engage with CDFIs for agricultural financial services. And so back to this specific grant program, it's a technical assistance grant. So the two main areas of technical assistance that CDFIs can apply to fund through this grant, the first is technical assistance that the CDFI would like to provide to farmers. So assisting farmers with loan, prepar loan application preparation or just expanding outreach efforts towards farmers so that they take advantage of the financial services available through the CDFI, that would be the first type of technical assistance. So the CDFI wanting to do direct um, connection around services and outreach to farmers. The second type of technical assistance that the grant is funding is more of an internal orientation for the CDFI that they want to increase their own capacity to serve farmers. So it could be some internally focused work that is in order to develop an agricultural lending program or to expand or retool processes that you have in your existing lending program so that they can better fit farmers and ag, um, training that staff might need in order to do this type of work with farmers. So those are the two main areas. Um, a brief slide on eligibility. So applicants must be, as I mentioned, certified CDFIs. So your certification has to be current. Um, you have to already serve or be intending to serve farmers who are based in Minnesota. And there's an additional eligibility requirement that you have to participate in at least one USDA grant or loan program. This is an eligibility requirement that was built into the grant statute that the legislature used to fund this program. So it's just a requirement. And um, there's a wide variety of USDA grant and loan programs out there. So if you have any questions on whether or not you as an applicant have met this requirement, please feel free to reach out to me and we can discuss so, and just to note, individual farmers are not eligible for this particular grant. How do you apply? The application process is all online. Um, you can find the link to access the application at this URL, mda.state.mn.us slash CDFI grant. You'll be asked to create an account and log in to an online grant application system via that page and all applications are due by 11.59 p.m. on Thursday, September 5th this year. Um, the full details about the program, eligibility, the application questions, how they'll be scored, and a few other things I'm gonna go through next, it's all available in the Request for Proposals PDF document that is available at this webpage. So you can find all this information in more detail there. I encourage you if you're going to apply to read it thoroughly. So and I'll just run through the basic sections of the application, but know that in that RFP PDF you can find a lot more uh, detailed information about each of these sections. So there are six main sections of the application. Proposal summary, which is just going to be a, basically a paragraph telling us the overview, and that paragraph will be used um, to share public information about your work, should it be funded. The organizational background, so you have a chance to share about the history of your organization's work and why you're well positioned to engage in financial services for farmers. Proposal design, this really gets into the meat of what you're saying that you will do, so you list specific objectives that have measurable outcomes, and you talk about how you would evaluate the success of that work. Um, then you get into a work plan. That is going to ask you to break down the steps. So you've set out some objectives in your proposal design, but then in terms of when you would do particular steps and kind of the flow of the work, that is going to come in your work plan. 
Then you have your budget, and there is a budget template available for you to use with this proposal. Um, and you're going to just list all the expenses you would like to fund. And there is a section in the RFP of what is an eligible and what is an ineligible expense for this grant. I did have one question previously if indirect costs would be funded, and it is allowed to fund up to 10% of your request, or I should say it is allowed to use up to 10% of your funds request to go towards indirect expenses. And then you have a final section, um, letters of support. So if you have any uh, letters, I think it's suggested you could have a farmer you've served previously speak to the, the services you provide, or you could have a community partner who uh, maybe you're going to collaborate with to do outreach around the work could provide a letter of support, but you just have a chance to upload attachments and letters of support. So like I said, that's a very brief overview and you can find a lot more detailed information about the application inside the RFP document on the website. How will we evaluate the applications? Um, those areas I just mentioned have uh, different weights assigned to them. So that beginning the organizational background and kind of a brief um, information about why you're well positioned to do this work. That counts as 10% of the overall score of your application. Proposal design and talking about specifically what you'd like to do, who you would collaborate with to do that, and um, how you're going to evaluate your the impact of your work. That's counting for 30% of the overall score. And target audience and focus and outreach. So this gets into that, when I was mentioning about CDFIs and the target audience that they've said as the base of their mission as a CDFI, this is the part of the application where you're going to dig into how are you going to do um, culturally appropriate outreach to that audience? Um, what is the specific serve financial services that you know are a good match for your target audience? Um, and that, that area is going to count for 30% of the overall score as well. And then the final two sections, your work plan and your budget, each are going to count for 15% of the score. And so these categories each have bullets under them, and this is also in the RFP, and it describes what a strong application would provide in each of these sections. So we've talked about scoring, but who will be doing the scoring? There will be a review committee that reads and reviews all applications. It's made up of MDA staff and external reviewers. They're going to evaluate the applications based exactly on that rubric I was just showing you. And then it's their job to recommend whole or partial funding for the applications that they see should get funded through this grant. Their recommendations go to the Commissioner of Agriculture, and then uh, the Commissioner makes the final decision on who receives the awards. So we're hoping to identify the awardees and let everybody know successful and unsuccessful applicants in writing of the outcome by October this year. Uh, so I think this is my second to last slide. So the Basic dates to keep in mind, like I said, applications are due by September 5th, and there is a deadline just two days before that for submitting any questions about the grant program. There, This deadline exists because all applicants should have access to the same information, so that it's a fair and transparent application process. So when you ask specific questions to me about the grant program or the application or anything, then I will post the question and the answer to that question on the grant website web page. So that's why this deadline exists, so that any questions that do come in can be posted publicly prior to the submission deadline. So as I mentioned, we will notify applicants by October. And then in terms of the start date for awardees to receive funds, we'd like to have the contract signed and everybody can start their work by January. Um, 
just as a note, there is a relatively new requirement with contracting related to grants that if your award is $50,000 or more, you will have to go through a pre-award risk assessment process. So it's possible if you received MDA or other state level grants from in the past that you may not have gone through that because it's a somewhat new requirement. Uh, so just to make a note of that, and then the funds will all have to be spent by awardees by uh, June 2026. So that's the basic overview I wanted to run through. I would be happy to take any questions. Um, and thank you so much for attending. Any questions? Okay. I know you're always supposed to allow more silence than you feel comfortable allowing, but um, I'm not seeing any questions come forth. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording.